The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, guys. Welcome back to another KevCam night class tonight. Um, for those um, that are new to the night class, um, we use GoToWebinar for you guys. And uh, this puts everybody in mute um, so we can eliminate any background noise for you guys. If you guys do have any questions or concerns that come up along the way, definitely uh, go ahead and type those questions in there. And tonight I have Mr. Steve Welsh helping out with any questions uh, that come up along the way for you guys. Steve, are you with us? Welcome. Yeah, I am. Welcome, everybody. Thanks for the attendance today. And I think, Kevin, this might be one class because uh, chamfer recognition is so easy to use that I could maybe even run. Yeah. But I'll leave it in your case. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So for those of you guys that are new in here, um, <clears throat> these classes are solely dedicated for you guys. And if you guys do have ideas, send those over to me uh, in uh, email. And let me uh, get my email typed in there for you guys. And if you guys send those ideas over to me, um, we'll get those implemented in. And we're actually starting to implement these ideas in next week already. So um, I know Ronnie had some ideas in there. Uh, Carlos had some ideas in there. So uh, we'll get those implemented in for you guys right away and uh, keep continuing on these classes for you guys. Um, one other thing I want to throw in there is every night class is being recorded for you guys. So I will put the link to the YouTube channel, and it should look like this right here. So if you go type in Solid Cam University or type in KevCam, a um, lot of stuff in here. Um, well, everything about the software will be in here after tonight um, on how to do everything inside the software. And uh, so great uh, spot to come in here. I think there's oh, 200 and some videos that uh, have been uploaded in here, some short ones, some long ones. Um, one thing I can just suggest is just coming to the channel and hit that search button and then search the channel for what you're looking for. And if you can't find it, shoot me an email and we'll make it for you. So, and make sure you hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I got to beat Sydney in those uh, subscribers. <laughs> so tell all your friends to subscribe too. <laughs> Good deal. All right, guys. So let's get the ball rolling tonight with chamfer recognition. <clears throat> so like Steve said, Kev, I'll, I'll maybe, yeah. I'll maybe chime in on this too. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned it in previous classes, but chamfer recognition, if I'm not mistaken, was a user requested enhancement that yep. uh, we heard from the, the community and took that to heart. So if you have ideas for the software, we'd love to hear it and uh, try to do our best to get it into the software. But chamfer recognition, we heard a lot, um, was something that, that, uh, that we did add in uh, based on user feedback. Yeah, absolutely. And what that uh, specific customer is looking for is so he didn't have to go through and deburr his part with a uh, rotor tool. So um works really good for deburring parts um, or doing chamfers as well. So um, <clears throat> like Steve said, it's pretty simple, easy to use. So tonight will be a little bit of a shorter class for you guys. Um, but kind of go through a couple different parts showing you guys how easy it is to use for you and um, how to use it and the, the kind of the ins and outs of how to modify stuff in there and, and whatnot. So, okay, so we'll get the ball rolling here. Um, first things first, we'll just go ahead and click on our chamfer recognition here. Now, first things first is what it's gonna do is it's gonna kind of like 3 di machining um, or pocket recognition or whole wizard recognition. It's gonna look at the model um, at your SolidWorks file. Um, so all we have to really do is come in here and we can just click on the model. And if you have multiple models, um, you can click on all those models. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna pick up all those flat faces. Now, chamfer recognition only works on 2D surfaces. It does not work on 3D surfaces. Um, tell you what, would, would you guys like to see doing chamfers on 3D surfaces as well? Anybody? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. Ronnie, I love you, so I'm going to pick on you. Um, Ronnie, can you send me an email about that whenever you get a free second? And then we'll add that into the class lineup, too, of showing you guys how to do chamfers on uh, 3D surfaces. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Okay. So we'll, we'll get that added in there for the class lineup for you guys, because I know not everybody cuts uh, two and a half D parts here. Um, so we'll kind of show you how to do it in the 3D world as well. Um, so in here, like I said, it's picking up all those flat faces. So if I can uh, rotate this part around, um, you'll see everything's kind of highlighted in yellow that it can pick up. Now, 
what it's going to do in here is let's just take this front face right here. Obviously, we can't get in there and throw a chamfer in all the way up to the edge. So the software is smart enough to know that it cannot come up there and get all the way up to the edge just because it's not physically possible since we're going to be using a chamfer mill or a spot drill um, to cut those because we've got the diameter in the way. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to get as absolutely close as possible to that face within a certain distance that you can specify in the, uh, um, the actual operation itself. So we got all our faces here. Now you guys can do uh, setup filters right here. Um, you can ignore edges um, by a fillet. Um, you can do solid bodies or just a specific face. So if you just want to do a, you know, a certain face. Um, let's say you guys picked everything in here and there's one area that you don't want it to touch. Um, you guys can just come in here, select it, and it will highlight it in purple for you over here. And you guys can just right click and do unselect. And then it will deselect that area. Um, for you guys. So pretty simple grabbing that geometry. Now we can do a lot of the same stuff right here in the, the modified geometry. Um, this is one that you know you won't use a whole lot, but maybe you went through your chamfer recognition and found out, oh, I don't want it to touch that. Then come into your modified geometry. It's going to be much easier than coming into your edit button right here and picking that, um, unselecting that specific geometry. Um, you can do a 3D model protect. So <clears throat> what it will do is it will protect areas. Um, you can specify so it doesn't gouge certain areas, um, go into certain areas that you don't want to touch, all that sort of stuff right there. Tool. Go ahead and grab a, uh, what do we have here? Eight millimeter. Let's use a six millimeter. And I'm just using a spot drill for this. Um, you know, you get, like I said, we can use a chamfer mill, uh, taper mill, um, so whatever you guys have. All right, so now levels. How deep do we want our chamfer? Um, for this specific one, let's just do a, and you guys will notice that these parts that I'm gonna show you tonight are all in your getting started. Uh, examples. So I'm just pulling these just general basic parts out of your examples that you have there. So unfortunately they are all in the uh, metric. So we'll do a 0.1 uh, millimeter and go to our technology here. Now here is where you guys, like the, I've always said before, the technology is where the guts of everything are, all the good stuff. Um, so first things first, the diameter. What diameter of the tool do you want it to be cutting on? So I can get my mouse to, so right here, what area or what diameter value are you guys looking for? So what you guys can do is, let's say you want to get really close up to, um, up to an edge. What we can do is increase that value. So that tool is <clears throat> coming farther down in there and it's keeping that, um, the shank, I guess you could say, away from that wall. So if you're just using the tip, obviously that tool is going to be closer. Here, I'll just show you right here. Get this part rotated around here. I can't get it where I want it. So if we're just using the, the very tip right here, of 0.1 millimeters, you can see that the side of that end mill or the, the spot drill is going to be sticking out. So if we use a bigger diameter, See how that kind of sucks it in a little bit so that tool can get a little bit closer to the walls. Okay, so we can do uh, cutting depth uh, one way or zigzag. Um, we can change feed for internal corners. Now this works kind of two different ways. This will work for, this is kind of like a rest material for you guys. So if you guys have a small area and you want to use the champ for recognition to um, with a half inch spot drill, but then that half inch just can't fit into the areas. What we can do is we can turn this on right here, put our previous tool diameter in, in here, just like rest material, and it will just come up and clean up those areas that was left over from the previous tool. Another thing that we can do in here is in the corners, we can actually slow down the feeder rate. So it gets a real nice smooth corner going around and um, you know slow down for those corners. And then once it gets out of the corners, it feeds up for you. Now, Playing with this one right here is 
if you have this at um, zero right here, it's not going to slow down. So these two kind of correlate with each other. And now I, I know it shows extension slash overlap um, and how much of an overlap you want from the rest material. But this is also going to drive off of that feed in corners as well. Okay, so our offset up here is going to be based off of the safety distance that I was telling you about earlier. So this is the distance that it's going to keep that tool away from when it's coming into, you know, this, man, I can't get that tool to, uh, coming in, try it over here, coming into like a corner right here, how far that tool is going to stay away from that corner. So right now we have it set at 2.5 millimeters and I'll kind of play with this a little bit and show you guys um, how you guys can kind of manipulate that a little bit to get that in there. And I think, Kevin, that was actually a question that kind of came in, too, of showing uh, um, how you wouldn't uh, hit the target on, on the feet. Oh, yeah. Question. Yep. 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 I'll show so that for you guys. Right there. Yep. Cool. Um, then we have cutting. You know, if you guys want to do it all in one cut or if you need to do multiple cuts, um, your extension overlaps. Um, this is kind of just kind of basic stuff. But, you know, if your extension overlap, that's going to be your distance. Um, you know, as we go around the part, it's going to go that much farther past, so we don't, we're not entering and exiting at that exact same spot. Uh, link, just your normal arc on and off. Um, now, like I've said with all these operations, if you guys know that you don't want um, a lead in and lead out, and that's the default, just put it to none, save that as a template, and use that as your default template. So, okay, so let's just see what we have. Okay, save and calculate. <clears throat> Now we can see it's coming in here, doing an arc in, coming out and staying away from that wall. Same thing as these tabs right here, and it's going through and finding everything. I'm gonna play this through for you guys so we can get a better visualization. All right, so let's play this through here. So the purple areas are my cut areas. So you can see um, I was able to go all the way around the entire top because I have nothing to worry about. Now on the front right here, it kept me away. Um, same thing with the uh, the four little tabs down here. It's keeping it away um, so that tool does not crash into there. Um, even over here as well. But you can see since we have this vertical wall that's pretty close to this other wall that it cannot get in there just because um, of our tool. So like I was saying before, we can come in here and let's go to our technology. I'm gonna change my cutting diameter to four millimeters. And let's change well, let's just see what that gives us. <clears throat> All right, let's play it through here. And now that you can see that I changed the diameter, so which is gonna keep that uh, arbor diameter farther away from the wall, that I'm able to pick up just a little bit more going on here. I'm still missing, and hopefully you guys can see this good. I'm still missing some little pieces right here because it's getting too close to this right here, but it's getting um, the majority of everything that I need. Now you can see on these tabs, I'm able to get more of these tabs going along right here. So if I want to take it just a little bit closer, I can come into my safety offset. Instead of doing uh, 2.5 millimeters, let's just do a 0.5 millimeters. And I'm going to switch my link to none so it kind of cleans up some of this for you guys. OK, so now. I'm actually able to achieve everything on that internal now because I kept that tool. I told that tool that it can get, you know, within 0.5 millimeters of that shank of that tool in the wall. And so it's able to achieve everything that's in there. Now I'm able to get a little bit closer up here. And let me play this through one more time and slow it down for you guys. I'll zoom out a little bit. And there we go. So we're able to really get in there and, you know, get really, really close to those walls. Now, if you guys want, um, we can do is we can make that, you know, really, really small if you want. But uh, that gets into the let's I won't say it, <laughs> the butt cheek pucker factor. <laughs> when that uh, <laughs> arbor is getting really close to that wall, if we have a really tight tolerance, the old butt cheeks are pinching up pretty tight, um, especially if it's just a single run part through. So 
definitely it's it's completely up to you guys on on that safety distance but um like i said it uh, the more you kind of play with it the more you can kind of get into that stuff now let's say you guys are you know perfectly happy with keeping that um you know a safety distance of 0.5 millimeters definitely like i said before save that out as a template and load that as your default template so when you start any new uh chamfer recognition uh, program, it will automatically pull those correct numbers in there for you. So, all right, guys, any questions on this part? Stevie, we got any? No, looks uh, good. All right, perfect. All right, so we let's, covering it all, Kevin. <laughs> let's hop over to another. So, <clears throat> like I was mentioning before, all I'm doing is going into my open and going to the getting started examples and just opening up some of these part programs here. So if you guys are, want to know where these parts are coming from, you guys actually do have these right in your uh, your queue. Okay, so we got a part here, um, and this is our 2D I machine part, but we do have some tapers going down right here. Now, as a and like Randy is going to help me out here, um, just so I can remember, um, it's not going to do any 3D surface. So where it's going down X, Y, and Z, it's not going to do it. It's just going to stay with the two and a half D stuff. But this will kind of give you guys a good example of what it's going to look like for you guys. So we'll go ahead and do a, let's click on this operation right here, chamfer recognition. Click on my part. And this works for multiple parts. Um, if you guys have multiple parts that are coming out, you know, maybe on a fixture, you're doing two or three parts at a time, definitely uh, grab those parts right then and there too. They don't have to be part of your target. So, okay, so we got our all our flat faces. If I do a show here, I can skim over that. So all these flat areas are where I can chamfer uh, and get that chamfer in there. So I'll come in here, grab a tool, and I'll just use a spot drill here, using a six millimeter spot drill. Levels, um, let's just say I just want just a small little edge break. So I'm just gonna do a, a, ten, a 0 0.01 millimeter technology. Um, we're good. Um, you know, I could do is change up my safety a little bit, but that looks fine. Um, to get a little bit closer in there, um, let's do a three millimeter, so it's kind of right in the center of that uh, that spot drill tip. Um, should be good. Save and calculate. Ah, got a feed rate too large. 2,500 inches a minute. I guess that might be a, just a hair on the fast side. <laughs> You're at solid cam, we like to go fast, but got to keep it within limits. <laughs> within reason. Yes, there yep. you go. All right, so let's do a solid verify. Let me change up my settings so I'm showing you every move here. There you go. And slow it down. And so what's going on here? Kevin, there is a quest. Oh, good. Oops, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. All right, there is a question, and this part might lend itself to it. You know, if you have different heights and one is too short, uh, so the, that the point would drag, and maybe like on the open uh, pockets on this, is it covering the, uh, the the chamfer going all the way down the part? All the way down the part. If, which? Well, just where where the you know that one wall slants to an open pocket there. Oh, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So what it's doing is it's trying to cut into that, um, and that's what I'm going to show you here is. You know, we're, 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 we are um, nipping into there a little bit. So what I would do on the specific one right here is um, I can kind of play with my offsets. So if I go to technology, um, let's just do a 0.5 offset here and let's see if that cleans that up there. Yeah, we're still... George, I think that was, I think that was uh, your question, George, but... Uh, let us know if that was kind of what you were after there. Or Kevin, you could take a look at the the question too. Yeah, let me uh, drag this one down so it looks uh, a little bit proper. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to get that material out of there now. 
yeah, we're still <clears throat> um, hitting those angles um, more than I would definitely like. So we're, uh, you can kind of see we're going through there. So let's try, oops, open up this operation here and let's do a 0.1. So we're kind of working on the tip and levels. Yeah, that looks good. Simulate. See now, I'm still cutting a, a little too much right there. So what I would wanna do for this specific one um, right here is just remove that face from there. Um, Cause I'm, if I go in here and do an execute, you can see I'm violating my SOLIDWORKS model right here. So I'm going too deep. Um, so what I would wanna do is just deselect that and then come back and just use a profile operation to do that outside perimeter face and this inside perimeter face right here. And I can show you guys how to do that. So if we go into our geometry here, modify, and actually let me turn off the tool path, do a modify. And if I click on that face, it's gonna pop up for me. Trying to find which one it is here. No, I have to do the, uh, the actual edit button right here. Okay, so that's that face. So what I'll do is unselect that one. And it will, um, if you guys want it to, it will gouge through your part and the only reason why that is is because that way you guys don't have to draw those chamfers in there um so hopefully that kind of makes sense it will gouge through your part but that's only because we're technically by putting a chamfer on there it's going to gouge through your part no matter what um just because it's cutting into the target model that's not actually drawn uh drawn in there for you so let's um take a peek now Simulate this. So now we're we're cutting everything, but obviously we still have that upper surface to uh, deal with. So what I would do on that specific one is, unfortunately, um, in 2018 they've made changes to this. So you guys can come in here and actually deselect a certain line. So with 2018 coming, what I would do is go to the modify and just unselect that line right there. <clears throat> excuse me, and this line over here, so I won't have to worry about that. But for the time being, what we need to do is just come in here and like I said, we can do a profile operation. Do new. And I wanna do multi-chain and do faces. And then if I go into chain number five, and what I'm gonna do here is I kind of undo, actually I should have just done a replace. So what I'll do here is Go from, do, got that turned off. So go from right here, continue it around to right there. Good. Come right here. And then we'll be good there. Like I said, in 2018, this will all be resolved for you guys, but as you all know, you guys don't have 2018 quite yet. Mm -hmm. There you go. And basically what we're gonna be doing the same thing here is the chamfer recognition except not finding the geometry. So I'll come in here, grab my tool number five. <clears throat> I gotta change that uh, feed rate so I don't forget about that. And levels, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Um, we can just do the same thing. What do I do? Uh, 0.1 millimeters. Technology, switch it over to uh, chamfer, and we can just leave it at the one millimeter. And now I got chains going the wrong way. Upper level here. Minus point zero one. For some reason, I am going really deep here. I'm missing here. Yeah. Um, what am I missing here, Stevie? I was just thinking that I couldn't have taught the class, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I got upper levels here. Pocket depth or profile depths here. Let's go to technology, geometry. It's like my tool side is off. That's what it was. I got my chains going the wrong way here. Just let me verify the rest of these. Okay. It looks, um, I'm going to go to my link, turn these as none. All right. Boy, I am completely, Ronnie's good at this one. Ronnie don't have nothing for me. Boy, my levels are just throwing me off here. Geometry low. I know Greg's listening. Greg, are you seeing anything that I'm missing here? Yeah, I pinged him too, Kevin. I don't know if he <clears throat> stepped away from the desk, maybe. Yeah, it could be. I'll have to look into that. For some reason, my levels are not, are uh, way too deep. And I have no idea why that is. Chamfer, cutting diameter. Let's try three millimeters in here. Nope, I got something throwing me off there. I'll have to look into that for you guys here and uh, see why. Can you get a feed? No lead in, lead out. Technology, advanced, nothing there. Constant chamfer, one way. Oh, part might be inch, inch Kevin, not metric, maybe. No, it's metric. Um, boy, I am just completely baffled. I'll, uh, huh. let's see, let's see, it was working. Can you go back? To... Oh, Ben, it was working when I had the, uh, chamfer recognition turned on. Um, boy, well, I won't get to uh, hold you guys up here. Uh, yep, coordinate system is on the top of the part. Boy, I'm just, because it should be pulling up from the levels here. Let's go by target. That's not doing anything. Huh, I am, uh, boy, it's got to be my chamfer here. Or the cutting diameter, Kev? Yeah, that's what I'm trying right now. There, that looks better, but something seems a little off here. Let's play it through in simulation. Yeah, 
and I didn't cut anything because I took away my levels. 0 0.01 millimeters, simulate. Okay, so that looks good, but I'm cutting. Let me just do a single step here so I can see it. <clears throat> That's what it is. There's something going on because I'm telling it right now to cut on point. Uh, what do I have it on? A point one millimeter of the the tip there, but technically it's cutting at. It's like we have a conversion bug right here. What I'm um, wondering too is, it, uh, is there any chance uh, the tool table is maybe an inch? Yeah, yeah that your tool table. Yeah, that could be, but yeah, it's just some um, some some conversions pulling off. Let me try something real quick. Let's do a spot drill. Um, I'll do a half inch. Select. And, oh man, data. Yeah, that's still way off, so I even created the tool an inch. Yeah, I'll have to look into that, guys. Um, we have something just kind of going on with this part file, or cause I know a lot of you guys have used this before. So let's see. Yep, yep, lower right corner. Yeah, it uh, should be. Yeah, I think we just kind of got something going on with this part file. So I'll have hey, to uh, dig into that. Yeah, you are using an inch part file. Am I? Yeah. Um, uh, part properties. Oh, <laughs> DB, you're right. And uh, three quarters of the was water one. wrote in there. Okay, so that makes more sense here. Okay, so let's try this again. Um, so since we're working an inch here, cutting diameter one, obviously one inch is gonna be way too big. I'm using a half inch cutter, so if we do 0.25, Boy, I was thinking all those files were in metric. There we go. That's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> <laughs> so now, I apologize for that. But, uh, um, and thanks for everybody telling me, is it inch? Um, I should have listened. Okay, so now <clears throat> with the chamfer recognition and this um, the profile operation, you can see I don't have to worry about those corners anymore. Um, now, if I wanted to, I could come back and with a, maybe a different tool to do that. But since we're working with a, you know, we don't know what angle this is right here, and we obviously don't want to be gouging into that angle right there. So um, that that way we can just eliminate that line. And like I said, in 2018, um, you have the ability to deselect just specific chains. Um, Sydney was telling me about that one. So, but for currently what you guys are using, um, just do a, a profile operation and we'll get that done for you guys. So, okay, sorry about that. Any questions on, the, on this part? <laughs> After I just fell on my face. <laughs> All right. Go to one Once a year, five. you're entitled, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to have you call Solid Cam support, actually. Yeah. <laughs> See if okay, we have one other prep file. And before I forget, um, Ronnie, I know I've asked you this already, but for everybody else that is in here, Carlos, Chris, Danny, George, there's a whole list of you guys in here. Um, have any of you guys used Surf Cam? before just master cam okay you maybe surf cam okay no Carlos you said the previous file was millimeters it's okay edge cam okay Am I missing anybody else? Master cam only, okay. Uh, ben, looks like you're the only one that I see that has used surf cam. 
Um, ben, if you could shoot me an email, let me know that you use SurfCam. I just want to get together with you real quick. Um, I don't know how to explain this. We're doing um, a little kind of tech review kind of deal. So I'm just curious on who has used it. So Ben, if you could, that'd be awesome if you could shoot me an email and, and uh, just let me know and I'm going to send you something, something easy, but okay. Don't see anybody else. Okay. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, okay. So now what we're going to be doing on this part right here is the exact same thing as what we've been kind of covering right here. We have some upper levels, lower levels following along with those contours. So we, you know, we have, up here, we have down here, we have down here, and we have farther down yet. Now, this can all be achieved by doing old school way of what I just showed you. So if I come in here and unsuppress this, you'll see that we have what, one, two, three, four, five, six operations. And we'll just do a simulation on these six right here. Chamfering everywhere that it could get into. So you can see, um, old school way of having to create all those different geometries with all the different levels. And yep, I did get in there. So in writing in custom offsets for those. So I should have showed you guys this part first, but if I open up one of these operations, uh, what we actually had to do here is by click on the geometry button. Um, oh, this is a bad example because it's on the whole, but on these straight faces down here, what we had to do is do a start end extension and keep that away from that wall so we're not gouging that tool into the wall. So now, to eliminate all that headache, and from a suggestion from you guys is the chamfer recognition, so I will suppress all that work right there, and now we'll go to the chamfer recognition. Click on my model here. And we'll go ahead and grab a tool. And I'll use this tool five. Levels, we'll do a 0.1 millimeter. Technology, um, I can uh, trim up the safety distance. Let's do 0.5 millimeters. Cutting diameter, let's do, oh, what size tool is that? Six millimeter, so let's do a four millimeter cutting diameter. So it's working more towards the shank side of the thing so I can get deeper in there. And from right there, we're good. Save and calculate. And let's take a peek and see what we've achieved here. So let's do solid verify. And you can see that I just achieved the exact same thing as what we did with that profile operation. But with that profile one, you notice it only went to about right here. So I'm actually able to get a little bit tighter inside there without having to do that guesswork of modifying that geometry. Um, so this is a real unique feature and, whoops, sorry, let me get this spinner around here. Um, so now when the operator or finishing department comes in there, we just have a certain areas that we need to just clean up. So um, just a small little spot here and here, um, little spots right here and here, right next to the wall. Um, and right over on the edges over here, and that's it. Um, so like I said, it really makes it nice for, you know, edge break in there or chamfers. And like I said, we can make those chamfers as large or as small as you want. So if we want something a little bit larger, and go to levels, and let's just try a 0.5 here. Solid verify. And you can see we have a much larger chamfer in there. So if uh, you guys are looking for a specific chamfer call out. Um, so this is real nice. Now I think, and don't hold me to this guys. Um, what Sydney was telling me also is let's say up here, you guys wanted a five thou. Let's go back to inches. <laughs> Who he wanted a five thou chamfer, but anything down here, you wanted a 10 thou that it will be. And like I said, don't hold me to it, but um, if I remember right, that will be a new feature that they are adding in with 2018 as well uh, per your guys' request. So, Whew. I was sweating after that second part. <laughs> now I'm feeling a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, could you also 
will do the same thing with a smaller diameter chamfer. Absolutely, yep. Tool diameter does not matter, so you can uh, put it up there and, and whatnot. Um, and Ronnie, you're asking about can you change the start location of the chain? Yes, uh, with 2018. Um, that was another uh, recommendation. Now, 17, was it 17 was our first year launching or 16? Can't remember with the chamfer recognition. Um, so to, to great great point, Ronnie. Um, so as it sits right now, I have no um, I have no way of telling it to instead of starting right here to maybe start over here or on the circles on where it wants to start. Um, it, well, let me just check 100%. Well, that's if you want to flip it. No, so I have no ability as of right now to do that but with 18 you guys will have the ability to change up your start uh, location so um, especially if you guys are starting like especially like this one right here um, now if we're going for really tight tolerance stuff starting you know on a on a radius probably isn't the the greatest idea um, so I would want to kind of bump it back to over here and basically what you guys are seeing here is um, and I'm telling you about 2018 is going to look just like it does over here for your technology. So you guys can go to hit the geometry button right here and we can actually do a shift um, and shift it over to a specific area, a start point and whatnot. Um, so a lot of this stuff is going to transition over. So if you guys need that fine tune control, you guys will have that fine tune control as well. So great question. So. Chamfering a thin slot both sides at once. Thin slot both sides. Ooh, um, George, I'll have to, I'll have to, I'll try that one out. Um, I, what is, what's, what's going to happen is, and I can tell you, um, is so with the chamfer recognition, it's pulling off of geometry like it does for pocket recognition. So what it's going to see is it's going to be. Um, for that slot, and what George is saying is, I really don't have a slot here. Um, let's say, I have a good example. Um, let's say we have a slot up here. What George is saying is just come down in the center and just buzz cut, just go right to the, the center of that geometry and do it uh, versus have it going around. And I think, is that what you're looking for, George? just to make sure. Yes, okay. Um, <clears throat> cool. Yeah, I'll have to uh, to talk uh, to development on that and see if we can, how that would work. But as it sits right now, I know it's what it's gonna do because it's pulling off the pocket recognition is it's gonna do a round. Um, now you mentioned doing the toolbox cycle. So let me just take a peek here and go to my toolbox cycles. And I'm guessing it's gonna be no, oh, it's gonna be a roll into slot here, right here. Close slot. So we could do something like this right here, and let's see, set the depth up. Yeah. So what we could do um, to cure that, if you don't want it to go around, is use the toolbox cycle, which is a great idea, George, um, with the close slot, and come through there and just do a single line right through the center for you. Um, should work exactly. Um, you may have to play around just a little bit with the uh, depth to get your depth uh, going correctly since we're kind of uh, putting in the center geometry for you. But um, yeah, that option is definitely there. Another way of going about that is if you guys did a profile operation. And if I go to, uh, let me just draw, turn off this. Do a sketch real quick. And come on. Do a normal two, and we'll do a slot. So now to get by, what you could do is do a profile here. OK, 
table looks. Oh, actually, no. What I want to do is turn off. Let me zoom in for you guys here. Okay. Take that and grab that same tool here. Tool five levels. So we want that same. Uh, Forget we're metric, 0.1 millimeter technology. What I'm going to do is switch this over to center and click my geometry button. And I'm going to come over to the modify offset. I'm going to highlight this and click on that. And then it's going to go to the center for us. Um, back. Should put us right at the center. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to hit the uh, take half of selected offset. So we do that. Now, let's see if we can calculate. Nope. <laughs> you guys are getting me tonight. Um, so offset is here. Take half. Man, I am just falling on my face tonight. Oops. I think you might have been talking about adding this to the toolbox cycle for yeah. potentially, Kevin. Yep. Rather than comboing something from the toolbox cycle yep. up. I could be wrong, though. Okay, got the tools, technology, and do center. Geometry, half, that's not doing it. Me, uh, am I clicking these in the wrong order? Take half of selected, there it goes. Okay, so <laughs> to get that to work, uh, make sure you check that first. Um, I'm gonna turn that one in development as well because that should take effect right away. But um, so check box the take half of selected, and then it will automatically pop it in there. So just click on the opposite side and then it will pop it in the center for you. And then um, we can come in there and do that chamfer through. So that's uh, one other way of kind of going about it. Holy cow, we got a lot of people are writing in here. Uh, to... uh, ben saying depends on if the end of the square around. Uh, technically all slots are pretty much round, so I'm thinking of something other. But yeah, you're right, Ben. Um, yeah, Ronnie, you definitely could pick the uh, the center line as well. But here's the thing is, if that was an extruded or a cut surface right there, I wouldn't have a center, i get rid of my tool. I wouldn't have a center line right here. So pretend that that center line wasn't there. <laughs> it was what I was going for. Um, this game turned into a game of Stump the Chump. <laughs> yeah, it sure did. <laughs> no, it's good. Keep, keeps me up on my toes and keeps me sweating. <laughs> All right, guys. Any other questions that I can help you out with or uh, fall on my face? <laughs> uh, show in solid. I suppose I could show it. Um, I'm going to say no for right now. Edit that sketch. Um, actually, no, I'm going to have to go into here. Edit part. And just do convert entities. Oops, sketch. entities. I can't grab that. So we'll just go to here. Features. Cut. And we'll say through all. Okay. So now delete that sketch out. Okay. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. So now we go do that profile, new, 
turn off my tangent propagation here, grab that. Tool, select, levels, point one, technology, switch this over to center, geometry, take half, goes right there, and we should be good. So now, let me turn off that other one here. And obviously I would have to come in here and turn off my arcs. So now we're coming straight down, and buzzing over and coming up. Now, um, if I do a top down view right here and I get my tool, um, my tool is not big enough for this. So I would just have to come in there with just with a larger tool that more appropriate because we are have a six millimeter radius uh, right here, and our distance is, should be six, or 12, I mean. Yeah, so we, I would have to have a round, a 12 millimeter spot drill or bigger, so. Now, um, this is one thing I'm gonna kinda include for the tip of the day, once I get that rolling here is, um, for those of you guys that don't know, just a quick, how to do a quick measurement on something, um, and this is something that I just learned a few years ago. You know, a lot of times you guys go into the evaluate tab, clicking the measure and grabbing that geometry. And if you're looking for a distance, you know, go right there and it's going to give us our distance. Um, one thing if you guys want is you guys can actually just click on the line right here and your dimension will show up down here. Um, this will do diameters. So it give you a diameter, it will do radiuses. Um, if you guys are looking for a distance, um, you can just click on the one face right there and come over, hit the control key, click on that other face and it's gonna give you the distance down here as well. So for those that didn't know about that, um, it's a little bit quicker uh, than using the uh, tape measure, but um, it is down here. And here's one thing that's, it's come up uh, before for the SolidWorks side of things is if the numbers aren't showing out um, maybe you guys are running an inch part, but it's showing metric numbers down here. What you guys got to do is come into your measure right here and change your units. So right now I have it set to follow my document settings, which are in the gear right here. Um, if I want to do something custom and if I want to switch this over to inches and four decimal places, hit okay. Now, let me exit out of here, it should, so now it's producing it in inches for you. So this number is solely based off of the measure tool in here. So just a quick little how-to way. Another class, sweet. Love hearing that, Ronnie, that kind of makes my day. Ronnie said he's seen it in another class and he's been doing that, so awesome. All right, guys, I think that's about all I can think of. I, I told you, I lied to you and said this was gonna be a quick class, but uh, <laughs> it turns out to be just a hair longer, so. Hey, Kevin, if I could just boil it down, really where chamfer recognition helps is you don't have to model the part. You can soften it up just automatically, correct? And, you know, you don't have to be picking a ton of geometry yeah. with chamfer recognition. Yep. That's really shines, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and where the chamfer recognition, as it sits right now, is a, a great utility to use or tool to use for throwing chamfers on everything in the part. Now, um, as you guys you know, seeing that if we need to make custom chamfers, then uh, go to the profile strategy. Um, and like I said, a yeah. lot of those have been updated in 18, but yeah, you're 100% correct. If you guys are just looking for a quick little edge break to throw on anything on there, I mean, it's easy enough as chamfer recognition, click on the part, click on the tool you want to use, tell it what size uh, chamfer you want and save and calculate and you're done. You don't have to worry about it busting through areas and um, gouging out your part. So with that safety distance, so. Perfect, any other questions uh, from anyone? Yeah, any questions? Thanks, Ben. 
We'll let that, maybe we'll leave the questions open for a second. I got one other thing, Kevin. I don't know if you've mentioned our Telefriend program lately, but yeah. if anybody's aware of anybody out, uh, any acquaintance, business partner, or whatnot, that you think we could benefit by uh, talking to them, um, boy, we'd love an opportunity to engage with them. And it can be kind of a nice thing from your chair, too. If they look at a demonstration, whether they decide to purchase or not, we send out a $50 Visa gift card, and then there is a nice reward if they do end up buying software. And uh, I am a national sales manager here. I'll say one thing about our entire entire sales team is that we're not in the business to hound people. You know, Just show them what we could do potentially for their company. If you did put somebody in touch with us, we're not going to bug them to death. We just... Uh, like a chance to engage with them. And if they saw the value in the software and wanted to proceed, great. If they didn't, we thank them for the time and move along. So we call it Telefriend and uh, boy, all we need to know was who you mentioned us to. And if they engage with us and look at a demonstration, there's a nice Visa gift card in it for you. And then a nice, uh, you know, can offset subscription or, you know, be a, a straight cash uh, reward for you if they do end up buying the software. So I thought I'd just mention that too, Kev. Yeah, great point. But uh, you're, <clears throat> you're, <clears throat> excuse me, you're wrong. It's a hundred dollar Visa gift card. As long as you mention the Kev oh, Kim special. <laughs> okay. All right. That's right. Okay. okay. Nice. Yeah. Yep. The insiders get the hundred. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. And that's Thank just you. a a bonus for listening to me ramble on on a, a Tuesday night where you guys could probably be doing something a little bit better. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, next week is. Let me see if Jack has got the uh, the schedule updated for you guys here. Um, let me just check real quick. Um, and one thing, this happens on my computer, and I'm sure it's got to happen on some of your guys' computer. Um, if you guys are trying to find the the night class sign up, make sure you're, you're on the American flag English, um, not the British flag. I think it's British flag, the UK flag. Um, so. Go to night class here, and it's not up there. So um, oh, I'm trying to remember, and I don't have. Oh, give me one second here. Look in the other computer here. It is going to be. All right, give me one second here. Next Tuesday is what all the chaining settings do. Um, so when you guys see that come across. Uh, I'll have to have Jack and uh, shorten it up for you guys, but um, let me get here and I'll show you something real quick, what I'm kind of getting in at. So what I mean by what all the chaining settings mean, and I can't remember offhand who sent me this idea, but it's a great idea. If I come in here and go to geometry, hit the new button, what does all this stuff mean? Especially your, your spine approximation, gap minimum, gap maximum, what what is this portion uh, covering right here? And I, we've kind of lightly skimmed over it, um, but we'll go into more depth next week on what all this does, how we can change these values, um, what does this information do for you guys? So, um, and like I said, if you guys do have questions, definitely give us a call in the support desk, but that's what we'll be covering next week for you guys. So, and then um, tomorrow we will be starting the, uh, Kev cam tip of the day, we'll call it. It'll work. Um, they'll just be quick between a 20 second and a third or a two minute long video. Just one tip of the day. Um, I'm going to try to get these posted every single day um, at noon central time, uh, depending on how the calls are coming in. Um, what I'll do is I'll do them the night before, but uh, they, I should be able to upload it so it, it pops out noon. Um, so kind of following. Um, one of the customers or one of you guys suggested just doing a small, quick little video tip of the day. So we'll do a video every single day for you guys on tip of the day of, you know, uh, of something that we come up with. And if you guys do have ideas for the tip of the day, send those over to me. If you guys found out, hey, I like this little trick that you guys do, um, send those over to me in the email and I'll add those in as a tip of the day too. Because uh, kind of as a community with all of you guys in here, um, you know, I know Ronnie, you've helped out, you know, let's say George or George, you helped out uh, Carlos or, or Rick McAllister. So um, send those ideas over to me and, um, you know, they're just going to be really quick 
little videos for you guys. Um, like today, we could just do the tip of the day of how to show that distance. So definitely, um, we'll be adding that in there. And like I said, you guys will be seeing a video, a new one, every single day on the YouTube channel. So one of the tips should be make sure you're using uh, uh, inch parts on a yeah, inch yeah, tools yeah, on yeah, an yeah. inch part. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for <laughs> rubbing that in. <laughs> <laughs> nope, it's all good. <laughs> a little salt in the way. Anyways, I'm sorry, Kevin. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, I've heard too much too long for too long about my my uh, self. Yeah, so the flip I, I owe you a buck 99 coming back. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate right. uh, spending the night with me here and uh, look forward to you guys uh, next week. Um, like I said, I you know, I know you guys like to come in here and learn, and um, I can't thank you guys enough for that because it's showing me that I'm doing a decent job at teaching these classes for you guys. So um, keep the ideas coming in. Um, keep, you know, let me know what you can do to change if you're not liking something and uh, here to help you guys out in any way possible. Steve, you got anything else before we uh, shut her down? Nope. nope. Just thanks again for the time. We appreciate everyone on the call, and let us know if we can help you. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. And if I don't talk to you in the meantime, have a great rest of your week, and we will see you guys next Tuesday night. All right. See you guys. All right. Yep. Bye. Bye-bye.